Ah, blue painter's tape. You've stuck with me through the good times and bad. You've been the foundation of my 3D printing journey, and your ability to hold the line is on a tear. But your time may be short-lived. Print and Z have sent their build plate for me to review. Let's check it out. Whether you use blue tape, glue stick, hairspray, PEI, or any other type of bed material, its primary purpose is to keep the part stationary while printing and to release the part when finished. One such material is Print in Z's build plate. It sports a 4.3mm thickness, can be printed on both light and dark sides, has integrated metal plates for use with induction sensors, is removable from the build platform and can flex to easily remove your 3D printed part. And of course, not having to put down a fresh layer of tape before every print, or to spray hairspray, or to put a layer of glue on your print surface, using a reusable print surface just like this can be extremely versatile and make our job of 3D printing much easier. To test if this Print in Z build plate is really that good, today I'll be testing PLA, ABS, PETG, flexible, nylon, and the hardest of the lot, polycarbonate. And just removing the last strip of tape from my print bed. And install the build plate. Done. Well, almost. I'll attach it to the build surface with some binder clips. So I'll put two on the front and one on each side at the rear. Installed. You can see the light on the induction sensor. It has engaged. If I lower the print surface, you'll see it's now turned off. Lift it back up a bit and turns on. Just recalibrate your Z height. We want two pieces of paper distance between the nozzle and the print surface. The PLA print is now complete. Remove these binder clips. The part is stuck on pretty well. It's not going to come off on its own. Let's do the flex test and see if it'll just pop off. Here we go. Oh yeah, what a great sound. Oh, that was too easy. Take a look at the bottom surface of this particular part. So this is the Peon 230 quadcopter arm. Normally when I print this on blue painter's tape, the pattern of the blue painter's tape is imprinted onto the bottom surface, or the very first layer of the plastic. But here, it's the, the pattern of this particular build plate is now imprinted onto the bottom of this part. And it is very, very smooth. Actually, the last time that I've had a, a bottom part printed this smoothly was way back when I was using uh, hairspray on glass, where the hairspray wasn't too thick and it was quite flat. Uh, it was like a mirror finish or a very, very flat finish on the bottom of the part, and this is just like that. That's great to see. So I've allowed this to cool down. The heated bed is now below 45 degrees Celsius. So I'll take the bulldog clips off and let's see how this is fed. Now as we know, ABS can walk quite a lot on the build platform, but on this particular Print and Z plate, this Peon 230 quadcopter arm has not lifted uh, on the back or the front of this piece. 
Well, one thing left to do, let's see if we can crack it off the build platform. Nice. So, it's not going to come off as easily as the PLA, but I have my trusty scraper here, so let's see how easy it is to pull off. Stuck on pretty well, but um, coming off. Okay, there it is. Fantastic. And that is perfectly flat. ABS is notorious for warping and to get a, a flat part like this, this part is over 10 centimeters in length, that is fantastic. Now I was told by Wayne at PrintNZ that this white uh, residue that you can see up, up on the base of the particular part, that's not actually uh, the material coming away with the ABS, that's actually the ABS that has uh, been stressed and when you stress ABS it starts to go white and that's exactly what's happened here. It's tried to warp as it's cooled, it hasn't been able to and you can see the stress marks where it's just had to uh, put up with not uh, warping and staying flat while cooling and again just like the PLA piece, nice flat finish to this and that can just rub off I believe, yeah it's pretty much gone, fantastic. It's left a mark on the platform here Okay, it's cooled down, remove the bulldog clips. Here is the Peon 230 quadcopter arm printed in orange PETG. As you can see, it hasn't lifted from the front of the arm or the rear of the arm. This build plate seems to stick with uh, PETG just as good as ABS and PLA, but let's give it a flex test. Oh, with the hat. Loves it. Oh, that's so easy. That's such a nice finish. Let me get that closer to the camera. Get that shining in the light. That is so smooth. Wow. I've, yeah, I've normally been printing this on blue painter's tape and I'm just used to the, the pattern underneath with the blue painter's tape, but having a smooth surface like this is just fantastic. What about the rest of this? Oh, no worries at all. Well, the flexible material has stuck down as well to this material. No point in flexing this because the part will just flex along with it. So let's see if we can just peel it off the bed. Oh yeah. Looks like I can pinch it in the center there. Oh yes, it's coming off. Bang, got it. Fantastic. No worries at all with flexible materials. Now, I do not recommend you print the Peon 230 quadcopter in flexible material or any quadcopter frame in flexible material. I've stopped this print halfway through because the nylon has lost adhesion with the bed, 
you can see it's just moving around. Looking on the Print and Z website, on the technical guide, it looks like if you're printing with nylon, you need to use some uh, glue on the uh, Print and Z plate to assist in adhesion. Um, I've also confirmed you can use blue painter's tape over the top of this material, but unfortunately nylon doesn't stick to the Print and Z plate. What I find really interesting with this Print and Z plate is it couldn't handle nylon, but polycarbonate, arguably the hardest material to print with because it warps so much when it cools, it's able to hold onto this material perfectly. It's not warping off the, the, the print surface at all. It is stuck down on all corners. In fact, uh, this particular Peon 230 arm is warping the entire plate. I'm able to spin it on the spot because there is a very slight bow to this uh, as this part is pulling up the entire uh, platform. But it's passed the first test, sticking down polycarbonate to the plate. But can it pass the final test? That is, allowing the part to pop off without uh, damaging the build platform. Well, let's give it a go. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is amazing. Get a close-up of that. That is such a perfect finish, and it is dead flat. I'll get my ruler here, and I'll see if I can show you how flat that is. This is polycarbonate. I've never been able to, to print with polycarbonate on, on blue painter's tape. So here's another uh, Peon 230 arm that I printed on blue painter's tape earlier today and you can see the the back side of it here is kind of bowed in it was not able to hold on to polycarbonate at all uh, with this polymakers polycarbonate they provide a, a sheet of build tack and they recommend that you print on a raft here I'm printing with no raft that means the surface underneath the part is nice and flat. It's the same finish as the actual build plate itself. No need to rip off uh, any, any raft and have a, like a rough finish underneath. I'm so impressed with the way polycarbonate adheres to this Print in Z plate. However, if I wanted to print something larger than this Peon 230 arm, using a flexible build plate might not be the best choice as the polycarbonate will simply flex the entire print surface. So for that, Print and Z have another item. This is a, a skin, they call it. It's made of the same material as this. However, it has an adhesive back, a high temperature 3M adhesive back to stick either straight down onto your aluminium print surface or to a sheet of glass. That way you can print much larger uh, polycarbonate or ABS parts without the worry of the build platform uh, warping. So this is going to be the emphasis of my next video, polycarbonate versus the Print and Z skin. Thanks to Print and Z for sending me this build plate to review. Check the links down below to the Print and Z website and stick around for the next video where I test out their skin with polycarbonate.